conduct a meeting. And Debbie will add Benny as a participant when he pops on. Um, Sarah will happy will be happy to do that. All right. Are we are we rolling? Are we on? Are we live? Two minutes, please. Okay, Sarah. Emily, you're on mute in, in case you didn't know it. Hi, I knew I was on mute. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hi, no picture for you. I don't see any picture. I'm on, sorry, I'm actually driving home from a little league practice that I'm the coach of. So I will be on video shortly. Did you win? No, no, it was just a practice. Okay. We are live, Mr. Zuckerman. All right, very good. Welcome everybody to the Bright Town Park Commission meeting of May 18th, 2021. Um, I'm going to ask. We even keep score at this age. But it's, it's really. I'm going to ask our newest member, Louis Marino, Mayor of Fort Chester. Coming to his first meeting, Louis, will you lead us in the pledge? <clears throat> yes, sir. Them. Go ahead, sir. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, the to the flag of the United States, United States of America to and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Debbie, please call the roll. Commissioner Rosenberg. He's here. Right. Uh, Commissioner Marino. Here. Commissioner Cohn. Here. Commissioner Hurd. Here. Commissioner Salonitro. I am here. President Zuckerman. I am here as well. Oh. You know, before we get on to anything, um, I think that I think that uh, at some point we're going to have to consider going live again. I don't know what that point is. I think the commissioners uh, need to think about it. I know, Louis, your your meetings are going live now. Isn't that correct? Yes, we are going to start the first meeting in June, and also okay. we have a meeting Friday life yes so i think i think we're going to need to consider that I, i'm guessing that the governor will at some point change the executive order uh allowing us to have these zoom sessions so uh we just have to think about it josh what about rye where what are you thinking about uh we're thinking about a, a july start we okay. obviously we obviously don't know uh, one thing that we're concerned about and you may have the technology to do it. We don't is to have hybrid meetings where uh, some are in person and some are on uh, on a video feed of some sort. And we I, have, go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I just, I, I, who knows what the executive order might say and what the possibilities might be. That's true. Just uh, in, in relation to that exact question, I have spoken to our uh, state representatives. We have a problem with the way the open meetings law is written, that uh, they have to be open to the public. And if you are appearing remotely, then the public actually has a right to attend the meeting at your home. Oh my God. And I have asked our representatives to look into that and to see if that can be changed. We actually had a situation like that in the village of Port Chester. Louis, you may remember uh, with uh, former trustee Branca, who was in a, a sick bed, I believe. And yes. people, uh, uh, there was an important vote and people were storming his home to, to, to come in. 
So I don't think we want that to happen. Uh, so I've spoken to, to Shelley and Steve to see if we can get the, um, the law amended because I think Josh, you're absolutely right. Many, many uh, communities may wish to have some of their members you know, appear remotely as we are doing now while the others are, are at the meeting room. So I just wanted to raise that and something to think about. Um, starting the, uh, uh, the voting process of the meeting, uh, the minutes of April 20th, 2021, if there are no uh, changes or objections, may I have a motion and a second to approve? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And now, and now it's Benny's turn. Um, Benny Salonitro is retiring from the Rytown Park Commission after 13 years of service. Um, illustrious service, I might add. And uh, this is his last meeting. He's retiring as of the end of the month. Um, and we have a series of proclamations from the Park Commission, the Village of Rye Brook, the Village of Portchester, and the City of Rye. So uh, we have also issued a press release. And uh, I hope that the local papers pick that up and print it in the, in the next edition. Um, Personally, Benny, it's been a pleasure. I'm not gonna read from the proclamation because it just, it lists all of your things that you've done and uh, uh, the accomplishments that you've had, your career in Scarsdale as uh, DPW commissioner, all the work that you've done, all the volunteering that you've done. Um, I just wanna say that it's been a pleasure to serve with you, that you've generously given of your time, answered some of my stupid questions. Um, uh, not all of them, unfortunately, but most of them, yes. Um, and, and you've shared your wisdom and guidance with all of us. Uh, you've served on subcommittees on uh, various issues like the parking solutions, and you've given your expertise with the construction projects that, that have uh, been undertaken by, by the commission. And most of all, I think you've been a good friend to all of us, giving us all wise counsel, keeping an even keel, and, and generally being an exemplar of what a commissioner should be. Uh, and I am really proud to have served with you. And I wish you well in your endeavors. And by the way, I still intend to call you at all hours of the day and night. And uh, I just hope you're, you're prepared for that. So thank Always. you, Benny. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, would anybody else like to speak? Yes, Gary. Go ahead, Paul. Thank you. Benny, I also have a very lengthy, well, if the sun is uh, show. <laughs> thank, oh, you. thank you, Debbie. Um, uh, proclamation, which I am not going to read. The one interesting thing is that, and what are the odds of this, is that you, Gary, and I all share the same birthday. Oh, that's, oh, wow. Wow. Okay. That's, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, the exact day? The exact day. Oh. So anyway, listen, Benny, sure. uh, you know, in the, in the almost nine years that I've been on this commission, it has been an absolute pl pleasure to work with you. You have been the voice of reason. You, you are a wealth of knowledge. And, um, you know, we're losing a huge resource and, and a huge amount of institutional knowledge here. And, um, um, and obviously I signed the proclamation, which we will get to you, but on behalf of the village of Rybrook, I just want to say thank you for everything that you've done 
for this commission for the town of Rye, for the village of Rybrook, because you have been a friend and absolutely uh, a tremendous resource for, for this uh, commission. I'll, I'll, I'll jump in next. Josh? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so Benny, just ditto to everything that Gary and Paul just said. And just let me emphasize that we've so appreciated your intelligence, your insights, your reasonableness, your graciousness, and the fact that you've just been a, a great good neighbor to the city of Rye. We're really going to miss you here on the commission. Thank you, Benny. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else? Yes, can I? Sure, Louie, go ahead. Sure. Thank you, Benny. Uh, what can I tell you, man? It's, you know, it's, I wanted to enjoy your life. Uh, I know you for a few years. Uh, we had a conversation in the past. You're a great man. We're going to miss you and, and half the board of trustees and myself. We give you the proclamation and want to thank you for your service. And I'm pretty sure you're going to be around. I want to wish you good luck. Enjoy your life. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, I'd love to add something if I can. Go ahead, Emily. Go ahead, Emily. Oh, is Benny trying to say something? No. Um, I just. I think I just, he's frozen. I just, thought, I, just thought, I just stopped at the sign very quickly on my way back, Benny. But um, yeah, I just echo the sentiments of all the commissioners. It has been really such a pleasure to work with you. I've enjoyed every interaction from the parking committee to conversations about you know finances and budgeting you're a voice of reason you're always fair and good humored about it and uh, we'll miss you a lot but i uh wish you well on your next adventure thank you uh, i would add that uh, jamie jensen has um entered a uh, a statement on the facebook but she might still be here jamie do you want to Read your message. I, um, Benny, I know I'm a citizen and not an official member of the commission, but I feel like I've been in your peanut gallery for 11 years now. And every time you say something, I just want to stand up and cheer because you're so reasonable. You are you. smart, you get it, you know how to work through really, really tough issues and you always take them on. So um, on behalf of Rye Neighbors to the Park, thank you. The Friends of Rye Town Park, thanks you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, just, just to let you know, I know something about Benny too. He's not really retiring. He's no. working harder than ever, <laughs> harder than ever. So, and that, that's the way to stay, that's the way to stay so. very, very uh, active and competitive. By keep, so yeah, keep on keep, keeping on. So um, you know, after 13 years, um, you think I get the meeting dates and times right. So uh, I, you probably saw me. I wasn't driving and talking on the phone, but I was driving back from Rye Beach because my wife and I and my family we decided to go to the beach to the uh, you know, just to visit it. You know, on a commemorative night, and I'm in the car with my wife. Say hello to my. Uh, so um, I am I am humbled by uh, everyone's sentiments of uh, thanks, and um, I serve the commission with uh, with pride. Um, it's not easy. Um, I think I had the easiest job as a commissioner because I was the only non-elected person, and what made it easy was I just you know was able to do what I thought was right. Uh, easier in a sense where uh, I can just use my knowledge and, uh, you know, uh, of things that were happening. And I tried to apply as much common sense as possible. So I thank all of my current commissioners and previous commissioners for helping me through the many years of service and um, to my family, obviously, uh, for putting up with the uh, uh, the many interrupted uh, interrupted dinners and other events so that I can speak to my fellow commissioners on events of importance. So I'm humbled 
to have served this commission uh, with dignity and pride, uh, and I, uh, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. So this is, um, this is just a, a moment in life of uh, departure from uh, what I've been doing, and um, I'm a, a community member of Wright Town, and I, uh, I'm here. So um, please uh, feel free to continue uh, utilizing uh, me as an asset if you find that uh, I'm still an asset. So I thank you all for your kind words from the bottom of my heart, and I appreciate uh, the sentiments and good wishes. Thank you. Thank you, Benny, and we all wish you all the best. But you have to finish this meeting tonight. Thank you, you Benny, for all of your service, and especially representing the Marinick. We appreciate it. All right. Oh, yes. I have. I officially passed the torch on, even though it's June 1, I passed the torch on to uh, Councilwoman uh, uh, Lindsay uh, uh, on Mother's Day when I saw her at the <laughs> local shopping. So, uh, uh, Lindsay, you're, the, you're, you're a great asset to the Right Town Park Commission as well as the Right Town uh, uh, Park, uh, the Right Town as, as well. So, thank you for carrying on the torch. Well, thank you. We can't thank you enough for the dedication you showed to the community, the passion you've served with, and uh, the expertise you brought. We're just so grateful. Thank so thank you. Thank you. And Lindsay, Lindsay will be, uh, uh, I hate to say taking Ben's place. Lindsay will be the next. Yeah, that's a tall order. Following, <laughs> following, <laughs> following Commissioner Salonicho. All right. Uh, moving on, public comment on non-agenda items, and I believe we do have some people who wish to speak. Um, make yourself known, please. Hi, my name is Lee Steckler. I am here to ask uh, the council for a special exception for the beach permit. Um, I have been, some of you may remember me in 2019, I asked the council for a permit to have an ice cream truck at my graduation party, um, which was a huge success. And um, this year I am trying to get my permit as I have in years prior for parking and beach access. I live in Port Chester on Cottage Street and I am, asking for an exception because my car uh, is registered to my parents' address in Connecticut, um, but it does belong to me. We've moved around a lot and that is the reason why it is not registered to my address. I have a video from my mother uh, that I'd be happy to share about um, that stating that the car is mine and it is parked at my residence. Um, I, over the years, I have spent many days and nights at the beach from collecting beach glass to helping with cleanups. All of the rangers and staff and everybody at the park know me by name and face and were even invited to my graduation party. Um, I hope that the council will consider my participation in the community uh, when deciding whether or not to let me get my resident permit this year, as I have in all other years. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> we normally, it's not a council decision as to who gets the permits. It's done administratively by the staff. And we have a rule that was put in place this year that cars in order to get a, a parking permit, not a beach permit, you're entitled to a beach permit. In order to get a parking permit, the car must be registered at the address of the people of the person or family that's making application for the permit. Um, we've had many requests for exceptions. Um, I personally fielded a request from a friend of mine uh, who has a daughter living in Rye and a car registered out of state. And I told them that this is, we don't give exceptions. I mean, that, that's the rule that, that uh, we've established. And the reason for that is, and I'm not accusing you of anything, Ms. Steckler, 
Um, but we have had many instances in the past where the permit process has been abused. Uh, we have people giving, you know, permits to, um, in the last year it was discovered that permits were given to people who, you know, were friends of people, et cetera. I mean, I'm, I don't want to ask Russ to get in the middle of this, but he, uh, he sent a, a memo to the commission about it. And um, it's just that, that we've lost a lot of revenue. And even more importantly, we have people, if people not entitled to permits take up space in the parking lot, we have limited parking and people legitimately trying to get in will then be denied. So it's my position, the other commissioners can speak to this as well. It's my position that we don't give exceptions. <laughs> And that in the future, I would hope that you would register the car at the address where you're living and where you're making the application for the permit. And again, I don't mean to disparage you personally, not at all. I don't ascribe any bad motives, but we've established rules. And I don't think the commission should be in a position of making exceptions for everybody who seeks it and, you know, take up, you know, all of us to, to engage in this at this particular time. Does anybody else wish to speak? Can I say something? I'd, I'd just like to add, while I do understand that there has been a rule made for the people who unfortunately abuse the system, I am not just another person. I am well recognized amongst the community and amongst the town and the beach. And I can't just get a beach permit. I have physical incapabilities that limit me to being able to walk or bike. I can't do that. My car is my only mode of transportation. It's been registered to Rye Town Park as a car that's parked there with Massachusetts plates, with Connecticut plates. And I, I don't think that I should be penalized because of what other people incorrectly did, especially when I'm, I'm no, people know who I am. Any other commissioners wish to speak? Yeah, I do. You know, the commission can basically do whatever it wants, Gary. And quite honestly, I have no problem giving a, a waiver at this point in time. This is a person who's well known to the park. Um, it's the first time I'm aware of in all the years I'm in this commission that anybody's ever come to us and asked us for a waiver of this type. Now, staff may have um, received those types of uh, requests in the past and just denied them outright, which which is fine. But um, just given the fact that this is the first time we're hearing of this, we have somebody who's well known within the town, um, you know. And I, I basically, personally, have no problem doing it. Uh, I would uh, I I'd follow Paul on this, but really on a super exception basis. We've, Great. we've 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 met Lee before. Uh, we've we've been to her graduation, so to speak. Um, we know who she is, and and the, the the fact that she is known and how can I put it in her own way an asset to the park, and also would have great difficulty in getting to the park if if we don't make this accommodation. So again, as, as a one-off super exception, I'd go for this. All right, is that um, how the others feel as well? I will do the same way, yes. Um, I, well, before, before this decision is made, I'd like further guidance, please, for staff, because um, we have been dealing with, as, as Gary referred to it, dozens and dozens of people who have written to us that said their cars are registered someplace else and there have been no exceptions. So now that this exception is made, what is the staff to do? How, how, what, is the, what is the guidance from the commission on how to handle the, okay, well, you made an exception in Lee Steckler's case, what about me? Well, my view on that is, Anyone who wants an exception needs to write to the commission and the commission will take it up one at a time, every one of them. Uh, Debbie, what is the, the 
population of, of exception requests? Is it large? You know, um, Russ and Sarah, please weigh in, but I'm going to say that it's on the order of fewer than 100. Wow. Not what I expected you to say, but. Uh, I don't. If you, want me to, Sarah, if you want Sarah, me to weigh in, I'll weigh in. But it's oh. been it's been dozens and dozens. And once the uh, the new rule has been explained to uh, to these to uh, to everybody that's that's uh, questioned it, virtually everyone has accepted it and has moved on. There's been a very there's been less than a handful, and I mean that sincerely, less than five people that have pressed it further. Well, I think what Josh said is is spot on in terms of this is the rarest of exceptions. We're making a super exception here, and um, you know the the the, the council's um, the rules that haven't changed. We just made one exception. But Paul, my the problem I have, and no offense, Liam, I'm sure that you know everything that Josh said that Paul said is correct. I'm concerned from an administrative point of view, simply this, if we make one exception and it may very well be that Ms. Steckler is, should have that exception, I do not see how you can deny a hearing for everybody who wants an exception. Everybody who says, I have a case. I don't know what those cases are. I mean, but, what's, but you need to hear them. Is there a common denominator that they basically, they, they have Connecticut plates or uh, what, what's, what's the main reason why they want an exception? Or Russ? I, I couldn't say, Russ would have to answer that. Can I say something? Sure, Bill. Uh, as you, most of you know, I started working in 2008 and I've seen th these discussions year in, year out, there's a small group of people feel very, uh, they feel that this is something they deliver and, and our staff have had to try to make slick you know, decisions. Uh, and now this woman is very well known and so in that sense, it's not, not, not others, but it was over the years, every, so many people wanna have, say that, well, we're the exception. And, and as Russ said, it's, I think it's over a hundred and I would think it's even more than that because and, you know, they, they were firemen, they were policemen, you know, they rescued people, you know, every thing you could uh, imagine. Uh, so that's just, uh, but I, on the other hand, I think I kind of agree with Gary that if you have a system and it slows it down, you know, and if five or six people are willing to make the case for theirs, maybe that's a compromise. I just, I'm just saying from a process point of view, and that's all. And I don't know the bona fides of any of the people requesting an exception. Obviously, Ms. Steckler is an exceptional exception. And, uh, you know, I can understand that the, the commission's view that she should have the permit. However, I don't know how you can deny a hearing anyway for people who say, I'm an exception too. Oh, you know that's what? That's all I'm saying. I, 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 have to, um, I think that you have to consider that, that, I don't know how many people have heard this before, but there are exceptions that swallow the rule. So I think, you know, the commission maybe, wanna, maybe wants to consider why we have the rule in the first place, and maybe we just don't have that rule. And what, what would happen if we didn't even have that rule? Could we, could we verify people's bona fides of uh, living in the town or the city? Well, as, Russ points, as Russ has pointed out to me, the, the people still have a right to have a beach pass, but not a parking pass. So uh, whatever the commission rules, um, that's fine. Um, may, may we have a motion and a second to approve the- Before you get, before you, before you vote, again, I just want to, I just want to say from the, from the park administration's point of view, for myself and my colleagues, um, I feel like we're being put, you know, and again, no, no disrespect to Ms. Ms. Steckler, but I feel like we're being put uh, between the rock and a hard place. And I, um, I don't feel like um, 
you know, it become it it becomes once the you know once the once we people know that the exception has been made, I it's it's going to make um, our jobs um, very difficult. You don't have to grant you don't Russ you don't have to grant any exceptions. It's not your authority to grant an exception. It's the authority of the commission. The commission will have to rule on people who wish to come before us and and say I'm an exception. And the, you know, like in a trial, they have a right to a trial. Yeah. And the one thing, Ms. Steckler, that maybe we could do is, you know, we're gonna hopefully grant it to you this year, but I would hope that if you're looking to have a parking pass by next year, that you register in New York State, that we wouldn't grant an exception for an out-of-state registered car for next year. That's good. Look, the, the fact of the matter is many of the people and I'm not saying Ms. Steckler is one of them. Many of the people who register cars out of town, out of state, Connecticut, Vermont, Vermont's a very popular one, New Hampshire, they register because the insurance is so much lower. A young person in New York State paying, pays a real high rate of insurance. That same person registering it in Vermont, the family may have a vacation home there. Register the car in Vermont or New Hampshire. Boom. The rates are minuscule. And then they say, I'm a resident. I'm a resident. Well, Gary. There's my utility bill. I would, I would venture a guess that that's probably illegal, right? And I don't, I don't want to talk to individual cases here. I'm not. But... I'm just saying, Paul, I'm just saying what's happening. There may be a lot of excuses why people want to keep their cars registered in a place other than the city or town of Rye, whatever those are. I'm not going to look into their motives. No. They do it and, they're, and, they're, and their applications have been denied. So we're opening the gates. Just understand we're opening the gates. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but we're opening the gates. And the, the staff is not going to have authority to grant exceptions. That's not their job. There's a rule that's been in effect since the beginning of the year. And we have to grant the exception as we apparently will with Ms. Steckler. And that's, um, that's fine, but we must recognize that this is what the process is. Right. Okay. So we may I have a motion, may, we have to move on. May we have a motion in a second? Regarding the exception for Ms. Uh, Steckler. So moved. Who moved? Who moved? That was Paul Russellberg. Second? Yes, second. Okay, call the roll, please. Commissioner Salamitro. No. Commissioner Rosenberg. Yes. Commissioner Marino. Yes. Commissioner Cohn. Yes. Commissioner Hurd. Yes. President Zuckerman. No. Okay, it passes. Ms. Steckler, you have your exception. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And hey. um, I will work on getting the car registered to my address by next year. Um, will I be able to submit payment online for the permit? Yes. Yes, I, yes, I, I you, expect you will. Yes, okay. you will. Will when the, when the I'll speak to the people that handle that and you'll, it'll be, uh, it'll be accepted. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Ms. Steckler. And thank you for being a friend of the park. Absolutely. And I apologize for opposing you, but you understand. Okay. Uh, Nick, do we have anybody else who wishes to speak uh, a member of the public? Uh, yes. My name is John Hawkins. Officer Hawkins. Hello, how are you, Paul? Nice to see you again. Hey, John is Hello, a Officer Hawkins, former right. Officer Hawkins. Yeah, good, uh, good afternoon, commissioners. Thank you very much for the opportunity to meet with you today. Uh, as Paul has said, I'm a retired police officer from the village of Rybrook. Uh, I'm also currently the security coordinator for the Rye City School Dress District, as well as a member of the Rye Tri Club that spends a lot of time at the beach. So uh, I wanted to speak to you um, this evening about my son, Aiden. He's a 16-year-old uh, sophomore at Westlake High School who's now 
who was hired to be a lifeguard at Rye Town Park this summer. Um, and speaking with the town of Rye, uh, I was told that there would be a restriction on employment based on vaccination. And I wanted to get some clarification from the commission as well as an opportunity to, to, to talk about uh, vaccination for teenagers. And uh, my wife and I are not choosing to have our son vaccinated. Uh, and I wanted to have an opportunity to talk to all of you about it to see uh, if there is any wiggle room or what what we're doing, what we can do moving forward. Well, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna have to start off by being the bad guy again, <laughs> John. Um, John and I go way back to even before Paul. I was on the Rybrook Board of Trustees that hired Mr. Hawkins, if you'll remember, and uh, he has served with distinction. Um, Unfortunately, my position on this is, is very similar to my position on the last uh, issue, which is we've established a vaccination policy. Um, and especially today uh, with so many people uh, now being unmasked and uh, with our staff all forward facing, especially the lifeguards and to a lesser attendant, uh, to a lesser intent, the, the park attendants, um, I feel it's our responsibility to protect our staff and to protect the public. And the way to do that today is by having the staff at least vaccinated. I think most of us would prefer to see 100% of the entire population vaccinated. That's the way to get rid of this, uh, this horrible disease. Um, but that's not in the offing in the immediate future, although the percentages are creeping up. Uh, and I, I would expect that in Westchester County, probably by July 4th, we'll be at 60% or so fully vaccinated. Um, but we have an obligation uh, we are not asking, again, this is another issue for the commission going forward. We are not asking for a vaccine pass for people to prove that they're vaccinated in order to enter the beach. We have not, at least not yet, established a separate area for vaccinated and non-vaccinated people. We all know that there's going to be a large number of people who say they're vaccinated when they are not and therefore will not be wearing masks. And I think it's incumbent on us to protect both our staff and John, especially our younger staff who may be getting it, um, who may be vaccinated at a less than uh, preferable uh, percentage than, than older people. And I feel that this is a protective measure. I don't have anything against your son, of course. And he's, from what I understand, is an admirable employee and we'd love to have him back. But my view is we'd love to have him vaccinated. And for whatever reason, you don't believe he should be vaccinated. That's in, within your family. Um, the guidance now is they're, they're allowing six, all 16 year olds to be vaccinated and they're moving that down to 12 to 15 year olds. So the science says that he should be vaccinated. I'm not gonna interfere in, in your home or anything else, but that's my, my personal view. As you can see, the other commissioners may feel completely differently than I do. Um, and again, this will open a door for other Gary, people. Can I ask Gary, what, what, are, what basis, what medical uh, information are you using to, to make it a mandate to be vaccinated as a teenager. Uh, you know, I did some research coming into this evening's meeting. Uh, first, I wanna start that I met with George Latimer this morning uh, and he informs me that no county employee is mandated to be vaccinated in the entire county. Uh, it's a recommendation, but it's not a mandate. Uh, I also um, did some research uh, on the American Academy of Pediatrics. And if you, if you don't mind, I'd just like to be able to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about that. As of May 13th of this year, 14% of all cases in the United States are children uh, being infected with COVID-19. The hospitalization of children under 20 is 1.3%. 
to 3.1%. Uh, also, it's important to know uh, that children- John, John, John. I, I don't- I, I know, let me, let me finish. I know that children are less likely to be seriously ill. I understand, but Mary, if you don't mind, I just want you also to understand that the American Academy of Pediatrics also said that children are less likely to pass on the virus than adults are. Um, well, yeah. With all due respect, I don't want to get into an anti or pro vaccine comment right now. I, I just don't think it's appropriate. I think that that we understand. I want to know. I want to know what you're basing your decision on, other than that you know that you feel that it's necessary. What scientific data are you using to say that? John, John, I I agree with Emily. I don't want to get into a vaccine, anti-vaxxing, you know, medical discussion. I've been the, the, the fact of the matter, the fact of the matter is that um, people who are vaccinated are less likely to get the disease and less likely to pass on the disease. I understand. Uh, you have your you have you have your own reasons. This is something that we want for our entire staff. And yes, I don't know about the county employees, but uh, the town employees have all been, virtually everybody's been vaccinated in every single department, every department. And- um, how, many, how many of the lifeguards do you know are vaccinated at this time? I have no idea because Russ has those statistics. Okay, I don't, I don't mess in the statistics. The only one that I know of that has that, that that answer is the park director, who is in charge of uh, maintaining. I don't. I, w I don't want to know the data database. I don't want to know who's. I just want to know that everybody is. Okay. Well, based on, based any, on information, John, that hold, up, hold on. Is flawed. Are any of the, I'm not arguing with you about vaccination. I am vaccinated as well. But what I'm saying is the data that says that teenage children, uh, there is not enough information on what the long term effect is. So. What you're saying is that my son who would be working there for three months needs to be vaccinated, which affects the rest of his life. When masks work, it's been proven uh, from the CDC. Uh, the American uh, Academy of Pediatrics says that children do not pass the virus on to adults as, as, as much as adults do. So what I'm asking is that you reconsider this and think of the other ideas of how we can- John, John, let me, let me interrupt. Up, I'd like to hear from the other commissioners. Um, Emily, you started to speak. What is your view? And then we'll go to uh, each of the commissioners in turn. Yeah, I, I'm in support of the current policy. Josh? Yeah, I, I am too. And particularly in the case of a lifeguard. Uh, um, if, if a lifeguard is, is, is called to actually save a life, um, the the connection with the saved person can, can, can be intimate. And I think that we should be, I, I think a lifeguard is in that situation very much a frontline worker and should be vaccinated accordingly. Thank you, Benny. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I don't stand on one side or the other of this uh, debate. Um, I, I think there are many good reasons for it, and I support all the reasons uh, that uh, have been talked about. But I also understand the uh, personal uh, views of individuals to uh, decide not to. So um, I, I, I don't have a position of yay or nay. Uh, so sorry about that, but I think it's a uh, I think it's a nuance that is going to change. I, I personally don't uh, know whether these positions will hold up in the long run as, as far as mandates go. That's it. I mean, all right. Thank you, Paul. This is a difficult, you know, thing. And, and you know, I think about this, John, and I think that uh, Mayor Cohn put it right. Lifeguards can be in an intimate position. I mean, if, if they have to give mouth to mouth to somebody and rescue somebody, do, do you, what, is, what are we gonna say if we've now passed COVID on <clears throat> by accident to that person? Um, when I look at the CDC guide, guidelines while we were just talking, 
um, while you while you guys were talking. Um, you know, the, the CDC director, she writes, though most children with COVID-19 have mild uh, or no symptoms, some children can get severely ill and require hospitalization. There have also been rare or tragic cases of children dying from COVID-19 and its effect, inclu including the multi-inflammatory syndrome in children known as MISC. Um, you know, this is a this is a this is a difficult decision, and uh, given that they're frontline people uh, who who may be administering mouth to mouth resuscitation, I just feel that they should be vaccinated. Yeah. I think, I think uh, Paul, it's also to understand that you know when we're talking about frontline people as lifeguards, we are you know we're talking about open air, we're talking about UV, we're talking about warm weather. You know, as as you stated, that the high majority of children have very mild symptoms. They also have the, a very low transmission rate to other people. Um, you know, we could probably do some research about CPR and rescue breathing. You know that I have an extensive background yeah. uh, when it comes to that. Um, the idea of mouth to mouth is not something that's practiced any longer uh, because of the fact that there is a chance of disease being spread between the rescuer and the victim. Um, you know, if we're talking about uh, face to face with um, residents on the park or on the beach, we're talking about mask wearing. You know, um, mask wearing is still a mandate if you are not vaccinated. Uh, my son, when he worked on the beach last year, was wearing a mask. And Mark and Jerry were both very good at um, ensuring that the members were wearing masks. Uh, this is an exception. If if he was to be able to work, he would need to wear a mask when he's when he's with someone within six feet of social distancing. Uh, when he's sitting on the beach chair and he's by himself, there's no risk of, of uh, spreading the virus to anybody else. Um, I just, I understand your positions and I understand your worry, but I just want you to also look at the science and understand that there is such a little chance of that virus being spread in those incidences that you're talking about. You know, that that one-on-one -on -one in the emergency process, um, it, it is very, very minor. Um, I just want you to understand that and, and, and consider that when you do make this decision, because I think that sometimes making a decision on based on what, how you feel in your heart is not backed with science. I think we're disregarding the, the other rules like quarantining with exposure. I mean, the, it, it would be a nightmare to allow exceptions to this rule and then have, Oh, like all, the, the 10, 16 year olds who all have COVID, you know, and we're all in the lifeguard shack. Um, but Emily, let me ask you a question. Um, it's a 95% chance of, of, of not getting COVID. Anyone can still be a breakthrough uh, person that still gets the virus. I mean, we're still talking that there is an opportunity for somebody to be exposed, even though they're vaccinated or um, even if you are vaccinated, you still are a carrier of the vaccine, uh, of the virus that you don't even know you're asymptomatic. So your views are also, and I apologize if this sounds rude, but it's flawed because anybody who is a lifeguard that is having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody could be asymptomatic and still pass along the virus to an elderly person who then becomes sick. So, um, you know, just saying because they're vaccinated, it, it's not the it's not the uh, wide brush that says we're going to be well, covering Of everything. course, of course. And we give immunizations to people across the board, um, at, with, you know, even though the risks of transmission. I mean, these are public safety decisions and we, the, we're doing our best to minimize exposure and risk. And I think that the science shows that vaccinated people have the least risk of, of transmission and exposure. And so my support of our policy stands with that science. I agree with that. Emily, you said that extremely well. I think that, you know, the, the question is mid risk. Louis, you haven't said anything. Do you want to? Yeah, uh, it's a tough decision. My personal opinion, I mean, I, I deal with the kids. I work with 1,500 kids in the school. They're not forcing the kids to get vaccinated. And this is what we got to understand. A lot, like the village porches, we're not forcing the employees. We can even ask. They get so upset if you ask them if you get a vaccinated or not. I mean, I will love, I'm going to stay. I want to support the family. I respect this privacy. I have my daughter at home, 24 years old. She don't want to get vaccinated. Hey, listen, I, I respect everyone. And, and to me, I mean, if you pass a law, I mean, I don't know how can you make even a law. I mean, the county is not even forcing to the employees. Any jobs... 
Yeah. But we, we checked, how can we? We checked with Labor Council Vince Toomey, who represents uh, the town and the city, both. And Vince was very, very strong on this that, yes, we have the absolute right to require it. So, well, it's a tough one. I'm, I mean, I, I understand. I understand. Not easy. Both sides, but not easy. Not easy. It is because how can you force me to get vaccinated when I don't want to get a vaccinated? It's not, it's yeah. not a got to yeah. vaccinate yourself. You can't. The, the, the question is not to force you to get vaccinated. I mean, right. I, look, nobody's forcing anybody to do anything. It's a question of as a condition of employment, right? Get vaccinated. It's, it's like, you know, nobody's forcing you to to do a lot of things. Yes, right? I understand, Gary. Like, for example, I'm going to give you a very easy example. The village of Port Chester staff. We don't know who's vaccinated. We don't know. There's privacy. They don't want to even tell when you have a COVID, right? Yep. You can force the people to tell you when they had a COVID until you know it's out. Even in that, you can't even let it's them out. So that's the privacy. So that's... Yeah, privacy yeah. is one thing. We're not, we're not, as I say, we're not inquiring into the health of anybody. Just as simple as to... Have you been vaccinated? Where's your proof of vaccination? That's the end of it, you know. And that, and that's all. We're not we're not looking into people's health care. It's not it's not a, a a violation of HIPAA. So, so we can do a question. So if, let what? me ask you this question. I know I missed a couple oh, of meetings. So so well, can I finish it? One just one second. To be vaccinated. So just Gary, let me ask you a question for. Uh, let, so, let's let right. Louis. Then I'll answer that. Go ahead, Louis. Yeah. Thank you. So. If my son wants to get a job in town, right? If he's not vaccinated, he will not get a job. Right. That's wrong. My opinion. That's wrong. But it's okay. You, you and I, you and I can dif disagree. We'll still I, be I friends. Understand. I understand. We'll it's absolutely wrong. But just me. I have a question for Paul. Are you requiring the the paid firefighters and police officers of Rybrook to be vaccinated? No. Or just there? No. Absolutely not. They're they're frontline people who have. You know, are are much more um, are are much more out in the public than a lifeguard. So I'm just curious why the village of Rybrook doesn't require it, but the town of Rye is going to be. I mean, that seems that that seems like two different sides of this coin. It this does. one, this particular matter, is a personal choice, family choice. Listen, I live in the house with four people. Three, we got vaccinated. One didn't. So I can't shoot my daughter. I say, listen, you know, you got to leave it at the house because you're not vaccinated. You can't. It's a personal choice. I mean, if you want it, do it. If you don't, I mean, like I said, stuff. But Louis, I, we can agree, agree to disagree. I, I'm yeah. I'm having a hard time with this conversation. A 16 year old, I can I can get my head around because you know uh, I, I get it. I, I I don't think he should be a lifeguard if he doesn't want to get vaccinated. I think there's you know, but uh, but I I do think there's an obligation as a as a community of human beings to to get vaccinated so that we can stop this craziness that we've been living in for the last year. So I, you know, I don't, I have no problem with requiring employees. Um, you know, I think there are other jobs that a 16 year old could do over the summer that wouldn't require potential, you know, life-saving mouth to mouth and other situations. Understood, but um, Emily, uh, let me ask, um, you know, my son worked last year. Um, he was invited back um, in the end of winter. When did the town of Rye make this decision and how much time are you giving employees to get vaccinated by the time Memorial Day comes? Because I just found out last week and then I waited, I waited seven days for a callback and I had to make the callback myself to find out that you, that you guys are sticking with the mandate. Um, if my son wanted to get vaccinated, he can't be vaccinated by the time he starts work next weekend. We can, look, look, we can we can make exceptions in terms of time. If we know that he's going to be vaccinated as the oh. summer is going, we can we can talk about that. We know that that if you get J and J, it's one shot, and if you if you get the other two, you you, you have to. There's a time, but if you get your first shot with it, you can walk in today and get your first shot almost any place and, weeks and three that, weeks later or four weeks later you get it if you can get you get a certain amount of protection with your first shot and if you get the first shot i don't have a, personally john john personally, I have a problem if you're going to get the first shot oh, but let me ask you a question honestly johnson and johnson 66 percent um protection against covid19 no but it's a hundred but it's a hundred 80 is 95 percent but it takes 14 to 18 days guys guys with all due respect yeah. 
I love talking to you. You're a really bright guy. You know your stuff. Well, but I did your we have we we have an agenda to get through. I understand, but I just don't think that you people have thought this through enough to make this decision. And I think that you're taking other people's lives who are very young and putting it out in front without having enough science to prove it. You're going to have a bunch of young people working at that park who are going to get the vaccination that may not need it based on science information. A year and a half worth of COVID-19 exposure, it's saying that these children do not spread the virus and do not carry it as well. Um, I, what I also like to ask the park director, what's the percentage of lifeguards that have been vaccinated already? And are you prepared to open the beach by Memorial Day with those with that amount of um, lifeguards? We will open the beach. Look, that's a fair question. As far as I'm concerned, hold it, wait, wait. As far as I'm concerned, there's only one question here, and it, as I said with the last um, discussion we had regarding parking permits, this is a process. If we allow John's son to be an exception, then we have to make a rule that vaccinations apply to, to people, do not apply to people 16 and under. If the commission is willing to, to go that direction, fine. I don't think we can make an exception for one person. It has to be for everybody. So, um, you know, exception or not exception, um, let's start with Paul. You're still carrying the rules of, of the CDC mask wearing. You know, we're not saying that if you're not vaccinated that you don't have to wear a mask. You still have to be protected. You still need to protect the people. John, do you know, John, if you think that everybody who's unvaccinated is going to be wearing a mask, then I think that you're grossly mistaken. No, I, because, because people are going to lie. They're going to lie about being vaccinated and everything else. So that that's not not appropriate. But, okay. but Gary, the question, but what I'm saying is Gary, John, 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 please, of the town please. Of John, I'm chairing the meeting, not you. Okay. And I'm trying to answer your question, Gary. I'm saying is if I you're need, what I need to do, to wear a mask. I need, I need to poll the 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 commission. Starting with Paul, under 16 vaccinated or no. Do they get an exception or not? John, I, I listen, I understand. Uh, you know, it was a tough decision. I have a 20-year-old a daughter, and the question was, are we going to, you know, ask her to get vaccinated? Um, we put it to her. Um, she actually did the research, and she said, I want to get vaccinated. And, and I understand and respect your position. I really, really do. But I do feel that people... Um, if we have the ability to mandate it, that, that we should mandate it, because it's the only way, as Emily said, that we're going to get out of this. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Josh? Yeah, I too respect the Hawkins family's concerns, but I, I am for the vaccination requirement. Thank you. Benny? I'm sorry for the delay. Uh, I, I'm going to abstain on saying yes or no. Uh, my original comments and concerns uh, are still uh, are true. I'm very uncomfortable because I, I don't think I have enough, know enough to sure. say one, one, uh, one way or another. Thank, thank you, Benny. Louis? Yeah, you, you hear my comments, Gary. I mean, okay. We can, we thank can have you. you all night. I'm, I'm supporting the family. That's okay. I appreciate that. And John? Thank you. Um, I, I, you know, Did you hear from everybody. I'm not sure. That, uh, yes, the the is, is, the, you know, yes. I'm going to repeat this yeah. for the last one. We can, we can, we can force no one to get vaccinated. We can't. We can't just force people. All right. We can't. Fat. We can't force anybody, but we can repeat a consistent message of what the best protocol is for health and safety and concern for community. And this is, I feel like. I, I hear you. If you have a policy in place, uh, it's not a problem. But I say it was me as a mayor, Village Borchess, said, we have 40, 60 cops. We don't even know who's vaccinated or not. So to just tell you right there, that's first response, like say firefighters. I'm, I'm a volunteer for 24 years. Did I, the chief told me to go get vaccinated. I didn't even know if I got vaccinated or not. And I'm active firefighter. I mean, we can go on and on and on. The only thing I'm going to repeat myself again, 
I will support the family even if I don't go nowhere. Thank you. Well, thank you, Louis. Okay, uh, this this matter is closed. Thank you, John. Have a good evening. All right. Um, <clears throat> starting on our other items of business, um, a resolution recognizing June as LGBTQ Pride Month at Rye Town Park. Um, I think that there's a there's a long history. Uh, the resolution uh, <clears throat> for some of that. I know that um, the city of Rye passed a pride resolution last week, I believe, and the town of Rye will be passing one this evening. This goes along with this. We recognize um, that. Uh, our communities, Rybrook, Porchester, the city of Rye, the town of Rye, are inclusive communities for all races, religions, and genders. And we cherish and value the dignity of each person. Um, and I think that uh, this is an expression of all of us, uh, especially in June, the anniversary of the, the Stonewall Uprising, as it's called, um, which I think started the gay pride movement in New York City and throughout the nation. And I think that it's really important that we recognize the differences that each of us have from one another and appreciate the differences that each of us have from one another and that we as a community support our brothers and sisters, the trans community um, who wish to live lives of productivity and freedom. And uh, so this resolution is uh, set forth uh, for the consideration of the commission. Uh, do any of the other commissioners wish to speak to this? If not, are there any members of the public who wish to speak to this? Uh, may I have a motion to approve? No more. Second. Um, please call the roll. Commissioner Salonitro. Yes. Commissioner Rosenberg. Yes. Commissioner Marino. Yes. Commissioner Cohn. Yes. Commissioner Hurd. Yes. President Suckerman. Absolutely, yes. Thank you. And thank you to all of the people in the city of Rye and the town of Rye, the villages of Porchester and Rybrook and uh, the Maronick, who have been at the forefront of this movement for gender equality. Thank you all very much. Um, our next item is kind of related. The Youth-Led Collaborative Community Project, Community Art Project. Um, they originally uh, wanted to make a presentation. What are you doing? What are you doing? And um, we have before us uh, in, in the agenda, the renderings of this art project. Debbie, do you want to say a couple of words about it? Uh, yes. Um, in brief, uh, although frankly, I think Russ, Russ has met with them a number of times, and I would mention that uh, Amanda Timchek, who is uh, leading leading this uh, program, and also Allison Relea, are here with us. This is a, a group of uh, students from throughout our community who are working with art teachers and uh, are working on expressing uh, sentiments and emotions um, artistically of inclusion. And this will be a uh, traveling exhibit of murals. Uh, and uh, the request has been that Rye Town Park be the first home of this traveling exhibit. I think it's beautiful. I'm, I, I looked at the pictures and I think they're really lovely. And thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Allison. You're beautiful. Um, is there any 
any further comment? Do you, do you guys, Amanda, Allison, do you want to say anything? Uh, just thank you for considering this. We are super excited. We've been Zooming with the students who are involved. They've got some really great ideas. Um, the muralist and Lad is pulling their ideas together very beautifully. And so I, I think it's going to be a beautiful piece of art. Um, and the youth empowerment piece is very powerful. And the message of kindness inclusion is very powerful. So we're, we're really excited that you're considering hosting this art. Well, thank you. We're very, we're very pleased to do it. And I also want you to consider after this, after the traveling show finishes at Rye Town Park to uh, possibly consider Crawford Park. We would love to do that. Thank you. And maybe Louis will offer Lions Park too. Absolutely. I was going to say that you took it. Anyway. All right. Great. So uh, motion to approve the art project. Make a motion. Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Hi. Thank you. Very good. Project approved. Thank you all very much. Thank you're you. very, you're very welcome. We look forward to seeing you. Good luck. Thank you. Um, the next resolution is a contract with MTS uh, to repair the southeast quadrant of the Rye Town parking lot uh, at a cost of ninety five hundred. Um, I had sent a memo earlier on on this. It was on next month and the price was 19,000 and change. Um, it has been reduced through the negotiation e efforts of Vic Federico. Um, I really don't want to get into a, an extended discussion about the parking lot at this time. We all know the condition it, it's in. I had uh, James Natarelli of um, Dolph Roquefeld Engineering send a memo which was also forwarded to the city of Rye engineers uh, to take a look at at some point, we will need to make a permanent decision. I'm hoping that, um, that uh, this repair will, will last at least for this year and possibly next while we get a permanent solution for the, uh, for the parking lot, which would involve uh, either or both the Southeast Quadrant, which we name the ADA parking lot because most of the handicapped spaces are there, but as well as the other, other parts of the lot. The lot needs extensive repair, far more than a mill and pave. And um, uh, the village of Rybrook and the city of Rye both have volunteered to have the commission piggyback on their uh, upcoming contracts with uh, that they've gone out to bid for. Uh, we don't know that the scope of the work that's needed will be able to be fulfilled by either of those uh, piggyback contracts, but that's to be determined. But tonight we, mm -hmm. we just have the, uh, the resolution to enter into the contract uh, with MTS. I make a motion to uh, uh, have the, the town of Right Town Park Commission enter into an agreement with MTS as uh, provided for in the attached resolution. Thank you, Bambi. Second, please. I second. second. Uh, please call the roll, Deb. Commissioner Salamitra? Yes. Commissioner Rosenberg? Yes. Commissioner Marino? Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Cohn? Yes. Commissioner Hurd? Yes. President Suckerman. Yes. Next re resolution is to approve change order number five um, for the, uh, this is for the sidewalk on Dearborn Avenue. Again, this was rejected last month um, at a cost of uh, 9,000, how much, 93.80. Um, and, um, it's back for approval, and uh, I know that um, uh, Mayor Cohn and Emily had sent a, a letter to which we will discuss at a later date, but in that letter, it expressed the, their, uh, their approval of this at this time. So um, I would uh, like a motion and a second for that, please. Gary, may I, may I comment? Sure, Josh. 
Yeah, so just with respect to the memo, the purpose of the memo is to try to begin a conversation that will better enable us to work together. We, we face a constant uh, accretion of change orders and small, seemingly small repairs, and we walk away from each meeting with a greater and greater capital investment than we ever anticipated. And we do have a budgetary process in the city of Rye. I'd like us to find a way to work together so that we can better understand in advance the park's needs. And so our city council can make an appropriate decision on budgeting in the context of, of, of all our needs. And I just reiterate the point in the memo that uh, I, I, I know you take issue with Gary and, and perhaps Paul does, that we believe that the implementing law in particular, the chapter 848 of the laws of 1953 supports our position that it is within the city of Rye city council's discretion to uh, authorize payments or, or not. That is- me, Jeff, I got, uh, got something, John. I got a little- like from Jeff on that, and we have a difference of opinion. I, I understand we have we have a difference of opinion. Okay. And let, let me just let me interject yeah. something at that point, okay? Because if we have a difference of opinion, one way to resolve that difference is through court action. The other way to resolve that difference is to agree on a process going forward, which I think all of us would agree is the better procedure. I have been discussing this with, with Debbie and with Jeff um, as to how we can make our process uh, more correlative, if you will, with the process in the city of Rye. Um, and we have uh, a couple of ideas. We, um, we, don't, we don't want to have either the town or the city be in a position that's adversary to the majority of the commissioners. We want to get work done at the park and we want to get it done as, as you have suggested in your, your email to us, you know, in a responsible way, which we have in the past. Um, the, you know, the, the one thing that's a bit surprising and you may not agree with this, but we have set forth over the last several years, all the capital projects that we think should be completed. Now, uh, we can make that a more formal process, which I'm happy to discuss with you. And one way to do that is for you to possibly designate either yourself or other council members or the city manager to begin the initial process with the commission, which would be with Debbie, possibly Russ and myself, as to what capital needs would be um, looked at going forward. Uh, the one comment that I would have is the change orders um, happen in every large project. And I think Benny will confirm that from his, his vast experience. The fact that there are change orders actually does not necessarily mean that the project cost will be increased. Yes, the change orders will increase, but there will be other decreases that may offset it. There is a possibility, I'm not gonna say it's gonna happen. There is a possibility that the project we're working on now will actually come in less than the bid amount. We don't know that because there are credits that have to be accrued. That. Please say that again. My Alexa just went off. I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, so- Gary, so Gary. We, we can respond. Sure. Uh, I, I think we agree that a, a constructive process is far better than litigation. I, I would like, though, to turn to our, our historian before he leaves the room. <laughs> I, I think there, there is a history of the commission recognizing the fact that each of the town and the city have discretion over the capital improvement payments that 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 they find suitable. Benny, is that correct? Yeah, we had a discussion about uh, you know past my history and recollection of how 
uh, the town of Rye and the city of Rye cooperatively uh, uh, joined to uh, accomplish capital projects. And uh, the history prior to this commission in, in my early days with uh, Steve Otis as mayor of Rye, um, my recollection has been that uh, there, there was that mutual consent and understanding of uh, budgeting appropriately in advance. And when problems came up or when there was changes that came up, uh, that, that, that those are mutually uh, uh, discussed uh, by the, the two uh, government bodies to uh, come to an accord. But um, budgeting, and this is, goes back to a comment that I made during the budget review process, we, I, I never recalled seeing a budget that was unbalanced or relied on um, the balance sheet coming from um, Town of Rye or City of Rye um, additions to the Rye Town Park budget. And that was simply because it was an obligation, at least through an effort of preparing a budget to show that there was in fact a balanced effort of uh, expenses and, and revenues. So uh, we ran uh, budgets that were unfortunately in the, in the red on closeout. And the history between the city and the town was that there was always money set aside because the accounting always proved out that um, shortfalls were present. It was an unfortunate thing. But uh, through the grace of good management and good uh, perseverance, the uh, Wright Town Park Commission budget was closing year end in, in the black, which, which gave a fund balance opportunity for capital and or operating for subsequent years. What that did, unfortunately, is because we were doing such a good job and in, in coming into the black, it, it extinguished the opportunity for Wright Town budget and Rice City budget to, uh, to appropriate monies or set aside monies for unanticipated uh, losses. So when you have the good and the bad, then, you, then what we have now is the ugly, right? It's like, you know, how do, we, how do we arrive at a mutual consent on budgeting for what we can't foresee? And that's why I was adamant about having an adopted budget that did not rely on Rice Town or Rice City monies. Um, for the better of the whole. There, there are some problems involved with all of this. One of the biggest problems is that, as Josh well knows, as Louis well knows, as Paul well knows, and as I well know, that each of our communities levies taxes. So when you look at your expenses and your non-tax revenues, and you see a difference, that's where your tax levy comes in. Right Town Park does not have a tax levy. So basically, when you look at all your expenses and your revenues and you come up with, well, we have more expenses than revenues, that's what Benny is alluding to. The town of Rye and the city of Rye used to set aside money right. to cover that. We had boom years. My first year as supervisor, Josh, you weren't on the committee on the commission yet. Uh, I think we had a, a, Joe Carvin's last year, my first two years, we had substantial surpluses. We didn't need to, right. to use that money. Right. Due to certain events, not capital events, due to other things, poor weather, et cetera, um, we didn't run such surpluses uh, the, the last few years. Part of it, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the even, I think basically, and I don't recall, we either broke even, had a slight profit or a slight deficit, but, but uh, nothing like in Benny's early years when the park, there were day, years when the park had deficits over $200,000. We haven't had it. Okay. And, and, and so we're doing the best. And look, Gary, uh, remember the put a those, Just, Gary, those years, and I hate to bring up, uh, you know, past history, but some of those years, uh, it was all cash. And I, I'm trying to be politically correct here, and and you know where I'm going with this. There's I'm not, I'm not going to comment on that. I know that's one of the reasons, that's one of the reasons we made capital investment, and and why uh, we don't have people taking cash when they come in the park. 
We have parking kiosks, we have credit cards, and God willing, God willing, when the Verizon and AT&T uh, mobile situation uh, is operating, we'll have uh, a payment via tele by, by uh, cell phone, which I'll, I'll get to that in a minute with Verizon, because when you have to end the meeting, we have a couple of items left. But Josh, I'll make a commitment to you that we will set up a system where we could work more closely together to, to allay your concerns through your budgetary process. I don't think we're really very far off. I think we need to sit and talk a little bit more about how to how to do it, and I think we can get it done. So, Sounds good. Okay. I make, a, I make a motion to authorize Right Town Park Commission to uh, execute the uh, proposed change orders as identified in the attached resolution. That, Andy, are that, you referring to number five? Yes. And also seven and eight, or just yeah. five? Oh, no, all the, the uh, all five, seven, and eight. The change, the three change orders. All right. Benny made a motion. Second, please. Second. 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 Okay, please call the roll. Commissioner Salonitro. Yes. Commissioner Rosenberg. Yes. Commissioner Romerino. Yes. Commissioner Cohn. Yes. Commissioner Hurd. Yes. President Zuckerman. Yes. Um, I just wanted to bring everybody up to date on a couple of things. Um, number the I mentioned Verizon. Uh, the Rye City Council passed. Uh, I call it Verizon. It's Verizon and AT AT and T. The uh, the cellular structures in the uh, building. Uh, the Rye City Council approved this special permit. I believe on May fifth, a week later, the uh, Rye City. Board of Architectural Review um, approved it. Uh, and I thank you to Mayor Cohn and Council for that. Um, the, uh, I'm, I've asked Leslie to request from the city, I'd like to get a copy of the, um, of the resolutions to make part of, of the park record. And I would forward it to all of the commissioners when received. Um, I spoke to her today. Uh, they are they sent electronic copies of the building permit application to the building department. They will file hard copies tomorrow. And at that point, the building department will do what the building department does and uh, issue a permit. And we hope to have the cellular structures operating by July 4th. Hope. Um, the, the, uh, many of you saw, while I'm talking, Debbie, you want to throw some pictures up? Sure. Uh, the, uh, the ramp and path are virtually complete. Um, that's the path newly paved. Uh, that's where the new ticket booth will go. Uh, you can see the, okay, that's all. Stop, Debbie, don't do if you'll notice the lamppost and how high it is, we had to remove the kiosk and you can see the, can you expand that a little bit, Debbie? I'm not sure okay. how, how I'm doing that. Can you pinch it? No? I if not, will try. If not, um, the lamppost is so high because we had to take the grade down to make it, I think people can see it, to yes. make it accessible uh, for, for the handicap. So uh, there was work going on around that base today. I was out there and uh, that will be completed tomorrow. Debbie? Yeah. Next. I just wanted the people, you know, the commissioners and the people watching to see what we've been talking about all this time. I'll get to the ticket booth in a minute. Do you, uh, are you able to see that uh, image with the fence? Yeah, that's the south ramp. And that fence is not part of the project. That fence was done with funds we got from 
uh, Hurricane Isaias, and uh, there was a chain link fence there, and now it is a brand new picket fence that will be relatively matching the ones that will be the, the railings for the, uh, for the ramps. Ah, that's the middle ramp. As you can see, the stone of the middle ramp uh, matches. You can see the stone of the seawall, the, the, uh, the path behind it. The stone of the seawall matches the stone of the, uh, pardon me, the stone of the ramp matches the stone of the seawall. Came out beautifully. Mm, looks nice. And you like that, Emily? Mm -hmm. nice. Okay, that's all also that's the, on the south. Um, any more? I just wanted to show where 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 was late the, tonight. That's what I was I was inspecting that tonight, Gary. That's why I was late. Ah, good. <laughs> so I think, I think that may be it. There, there might be one right. more. You've got the that's idea. Okay. That's okay. So the the last remaining puzzle there is the ticket booth. That has been ordered. Uh, unfortunately, as you probably read in the papers, there are shortages all over of everything. But we have an expected uh, six-week delivery, which hopefully will get us to uh, uh, before July 4th. That's not how it looks today. That's before the concrete was poured. Mm -hmm. uh, we had an earlier uh, picture showing it finished every somewhere along the line. The first picture, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm finding it. Have it they just had it. Okay. Anyway. That should do it. Nope, you went back. There. That's how it is. So anyway, we're hoping that the ticket booth will be delivered and installed, and then there will be a fencing that goes around that. Um, and and that's, that's what the project is looking like. Uh, the, the, uh, the guardrails are being installed today. Uh, the south ramp will be completely finished, including the entrance gates. Uh, and the, the handrail, both along the seawall and along the, uh, the, the, the beach, uh, we, we changed the, uh, the design of the railing. Uh, the, the, the railing along the seawall is no longer a picket fence. It's a, uh, I forgot what you call the, you know, um, it's a, just a railing. And we're going to get a credit for that. Josh, I hope that makes you happy. We're going to get a credit. Made my evening, Gary. Good, good. <laughs> let's, so, let's, let's, let's find something really meaningful in the park that needs to be done and let's invest the credit. <laughs> I think we've already got it spent, but that's okay. <laughs> anyway, so that, um, that's it. Um, any questions? Um, I, I noticed from the financial statement that the uh, cash in can, cash in hand is doing very very well, and um, we're issuing a lot of permits. Comments from the commissioners before we adjourn. No comments. Motion to adjourn. Can I make the motion since it's my last meeting to adjourn? You, you can make the motion. Gary, you want me to sign on to the town board, the town council meeting? Uh, you don't have to. Okay, Hope, Hope sent me a, an invite. I wasn't sure if you needed me to sign on. You don't, no, you don't, you don't need it. Um, we, okay. we gave you the proclamation here. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. You're very welcome. Again. Very welcome. Thank you, Benny. See you guys on the Thank beach. You, Benny. Thank yeah. you. See you I'll on call, the beach. I'll call, I'll call you soon, Benny. I know you will. Thank you. I'll be calling you evening. asking you, what did you get me involved in? <laughs> <laughs> welcome Come aboard. Back. Welcome aboard. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 See Good you night. next month. Good night.
Good night. Hey, Louie, how was that for a meeting? Quick? He's gone. <laughs> All right, see you on the next side. See you on the other side. Bye.